What's good everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Zamir from XCC Tunes. In this video, I'm going to show you guys what are the things that you should do after you have installed Cubase. Okay, so these things that I'm going to share with you guys today is going to definitely improve your workflow and help you produce productively. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So the first thing is the preferences. So I'm going to show you guys what are the preferences that I like to change and the first one is going to be under the editing option here go to part get track names and make sure it's checked okay what it does is i'm going to just show you guys i'm going to double click and open up this midi track and let's name them let's say this is keyboard keys and then this one is guitar for example right so i have this midi event here so did you notice once i created this midi event it automatically named them for me keys okay and look what happens when i drag it down it changed to guitar all right so this is useful especially when i'm working on a big strings or orchestral music sometimes i want to layer strings and brass instruments or same strings and woodwind instrument for instance let's say this is string instrument and I want to copy the same part and bring it down to a flute or oboe or a trombone, for example. When I drag it down, it's going to automatically name those MIDI events. So that definitely helps with my workflow. So this is the first preference that you need to check. So let's go to the preference again. I'm going to talk about this option here, which is use up and down navigation commands for selecting tracks only okay let me add a couple more tracks now okay i'm going to use my arrow key on the keyboard up and down arrow key to move up and down okay this is definitely useful especially when i'm recording something for example let's say this is a keyboard part and i'm recording something right and then i'm going to go down and record another thing I'm sure you notice that I don't even have to use my mouse to go to other tracks to record. The record was already on and I can just move up and down and add my parts there. Okay. When I'm in a creative zone, I want to do things fast and this definitely helps my workflow. So the next preference that I check always is track selection for event selection. So make sure you check on this box. This is really cool. Okay, so for example, we have these all these parts right now, okay? When you select these tracks, you notice I didn't select the track, but I select just the event here, but the track gets selected automatically. So if it's not enabled, right? When it is not enabled, so when I click on this event, the tracks is not selected automatically. So why this is important is, let me just show you, let me turn this back on. So I like to have this feature on because when I select this MIDI event, now what I can do, I can add the track to a group track. I have a keyboard shortcut which I just pressed and it automatically add to the folder and assign a group track together. Okay, let me show you why this is important. For example, if I click on this MIDI event, both of these MIDI event and it's not really nearby, okay, it's kind of like far away. Right, but I'm gonna create a folder track. Now I'm gonna use my shortcut, which I have already assigned to the MIDI remote. I'm gonna press that now, and notice it already created the folder track, and and I don't even have to select the track one by one and use the shortcut. I can just click on the events, and that event will automatically select the tracks that I would like to assign to a folder or send to a folder. Right. So this is really, really useful and I suggest you should have this option checked on as well. All right, so let's go to the next preference. Okay, I'm going to go to the audio tab right here and go and check on this use mouse wheel for event volume and fades. Okay, this is useful for audio tracks. Let me drag a couple of audio tracks right now. Okay, I've added a couple of audio tracks right now. Let me just zoom this guy a little bit. Okay, now you can see it clearly. I'm going to click on this event 
and use my mouse wheel to lower the volume and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll up and increase the volume right so scroll down lower scroll up increase this is really really useful especially when I'm editing game staging and that kind of stuff okay but you have to be really careful especially when you have large amount of tracks sometimes you will be scrolling down and up using the mouse wheel and if you have accidentally click on any of these events and then if you scroll down or up it's gonna adjust the volume so be careful with that to avoid that what you can do you can actually go to edit and go to key commands and you can set a a keyboard uh, shortcut here and then you can turn on and off whenever you want or you can also assign it to your MIDI controller that has a button which I'm going to talk about the MIDI mapping which is another useful feature that you should definitely configure to improve your workflow okay so let's move on to the next preference uh, go to transport and uh, select on this return to start position on stop okay make sure this is checked and why this is important is okay let's say I'm going to play the part from here when I stop it's going to go back to the same start position but if I don't have it checked let's go and uncheck them when I hit play and stop now it's going to pause right there and when I hit play again it's going to resume from there okay this is useful sometime but most of the time I prefer to have it stop and back to the position that it was before so let's check them again okay so now let's go to the other options here okay, let's go to metering and appearance okay I like to set three colors for this meter why because I want to make sure that my mix level does not go more than minus 6 dB so when I see minus 6 dB it's already going to be in yellow but I can adjust this uh, however I want let's say I want to bring this down to minus 7.5 I can do so or if you think that you are safe until minus 3 you can go ahead and you know change it to minus 3 and you can also double click and enter the value here okay so I like to keep it minus 6 dB above that it's going to be red and before 24.5 um, usually I like to set it up to 18 dB yeah minus 18 dB okay this is good for me but you can also add or remove these colors the way you prefer okay okay let's move on to the next it's going to be under user interface track and mix console channel colors okay I like to check on all of these box colorize tracks and mix console I'm going to show you guys my mixer channel okay you can see that these colors is on the whole track right but if I did not have it checked tracks folder and mix console is not checked looks what happened when I go to mix window you see it doesn't really color the whole track here so I don't like that I'm gonna go to preference and make sure that these options are checked and also you can adjust the color strength and the brightness so I don't like to have it too too bright for me in terms of colors okay let me just try you see what happens it looks really really bright but if I go and change it to how it was before it's gonna look a little bit darker and I like that way okay but you can definitely change the way you want so that's some of the preferences that I always change and this definitely speed up my workflow okay so the next gonna be the key command so here are some of the key commands that I always use Okay, these are some of my macros that I created uh, but uh, most of the time I like to have these one duplicate selected track without data okay I used to have this as a keyboard shortcut but currently since Cubase 12 the MIDI integration I have set it to a button on my MIDI controller however these are some of the shortcut that you should be aware of because a lot of people don't know about this so duplicate selected track without data let me assign it to one of the shortcut key control alt d if you notice control alt d is already mapped to this 
shortcut okay so what it means is let's say I have this track drums with the audio event right here okay and I want to just duplicate the track without the audio data I can just press ctrl alt d and I've duplicated it without any data and have a new audio track with all the versions that I want with all the instances that I want the sense that I want and but with no data on it so that definitely speed up my workflow okay so make sure to have that uh, key shortcut assigned let's go to key commands again the next one is this one right here folder group okay actually they had a different name but I renamed this because when you look at my MIDI remote here I have this folder and group sign here so I, I can see better like this way so I've changed it I don't remember the actual name I think it was move selected track to a folder track and assign a group track or something like that. Yeah, you guys can see it in the macro. Your macro will be slightly lesser than this one because I've added quite a lot of shortcut. Uh, so you can just see it right there. It will be there. Okay, so assign that to one of the key, key shortcut. I used to have it control alt F. Yep, project. Okay, yeah, this is the one project move selected track to new folder and group track so this is the one and uh, you can yeah it's the one I mean you can sign it to any of your favorite shortcut key which you can remember right and that is really useful okay and the other one I have set is this one cut head okay cut head and cut tail I've assigned it to the comma and the period key so for example I'm gonna click on this audio event and I'm going to set a position of the cursor and I can cut the head which means everything before this cursor will be deleted and then I can cut the tail which means everything after this cursor will be deleted right so I've set it to comma and period key on the keyboard okay this is very very useful I use this all the time and it also works on a uh, key editor as well for example Let's say I have these nodes. Okay. Right. Let's say this is overlap and I don't want this to overlap. So what I do, I'll click on this two of these nodes and go to this section here. And now I can press the period key to cut the end. Or I can go here and cut the beginning of these nodes because I want to start it from this section here. And done right so this shortcut key is very useful you must have it signed to an easy to remember shortcut key okay the other thing i like to change is the metronome sound okay why i like to change the metronome sound because i don't really like the steinberg's standard metronome sound it's too sharp for my ears and especially when i'm recording my client i can hear the metronome bleeding in to the mic because of its high frequency sound okay so I always go and change them. You can come here and select all these sounds and you just kind of like um, audition them and see which works for you. Okay, the one that I have right now is this one. Okay. Why I like to have this one is it's easy on the ears and it's not too high in frequency so it will not pierce through the headphone and go into the mic. However, if you don't like that one, you can go up here and audition them and see which one you prefer. Or you can use the Steinberg one, which is this one. Okay, the next one is the offline processing shortcut key. So if you press F7, you get this window, which is the direct offline processing window. For example, if I want to process this section here, I can go to F7. And now I can add some processes here through these these options here right but I have already have my own shortcut for these for example if I click on this reverse it will add one of my favorite reverb and then it will reverse this audio section here and now I can hit play okay now I have that already added to it but I can also bypass them okay so I'll get the original one so I've already saved them okay how to save this is very simple for example if you want to add one more process in here let's say you want to have a, a 
fade in for example what you can do you can select all of them press shift and click and just drag it down here and it's going to create a shortcut and then you can just name them and that's it and another thing you can also set a key command for this shortcut okay i'm going to show you guys go to edit go to key command and then go to offline okay now you see this favorite okay i have set it to shift plus z right shift z what's going to happen when i press shift and z it added that processing right there okay so this is another fast way to work so let's move on to the next tip okay the other one i like is the control room okay this is really really important especially this insert section here so i have this supervision already added to this control room so every time i launch cubase this this supervision is going to be right there it's not going to be removed so for example if i have any other uh, plugins that i use to monitor my mix right there is plugins from waves where i can monitor from different type of monitors speakers i can put all of them in this insert section here and every time i launch cubase it's going to be right there let's go to the media tab here and I'm going to go to VST instrument here. This is my favorite folder and I have all my favorite plugins that I use on a regular basis. And I have this drum folder as well. If I want to have my, all my drums is in this folder. See, I have this groove agent, which is not added here, but I'm going to show you guys how to add it shortly. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to VST instrument, click on this button right here and go to plugin manager. Okay. You can also access this from the studio and go to plugin manager okay it's, got, it's the same thing basically this is where you can add a new folder or you can have a new collection i already have this drums folder right here okay what i can do now i can add my groove agent in this folder as well right if you notice it moved right away and I also i can create synth folder okay i also want to put my transfuser here because it's, that's also a rhythmic plugin Let's create a new folder for synth right so synth i can have my uh, massive massive x fm8 okay and so on okay but if you want to add more plugins here let's say i want to add this hybrid okay i can just drag and drop it to my favorite folder okay and then i can add it to my synth so this is this is how you can add your favorite folders and i also have it for vst effects but vst effects if you notice i have more folders than my instrument because i have more effects plugins than instrument plugins for example i have my limiter distortion i also have my vocal folder where i use these plugins on a vocal most of the time so it's quite handy to have it arranged like so and then i have my drums and so on right so this is really really useful and imperative to have these folder set up okay let's move on to the next tip okay i'm going to go to the file browser here here is where i keep my my own samples the drum samples and so on this is very handy i can just double click on this and i can find my favorite folders and favorite drums and i can you know start working now you don't have to go and search your sounds elsewhere so how to do it go to your folder your favorite folder so let's say i'm going to go to my hard disk okay let's say this is the folder that i want to assign i want to add to my favorite section here just right click go to add favorite and then name them hit ok and it will be there right it's very simple so let's move on to the next tip okay, this is very important this is track preset i'm going to show you guys what track preset is you go to user preset you go to track preset under audio i have all these presets this is the delay i'm going to just drag it like so and it created a send effects right this is a send effects with the plugin my favorite delay plugin okay quarter note and i've delay for eight note and i've set it already so how can you add them this is very simple you have to create an fx folder so let's go to effects here let me get a delay right now let's go let's say mono delay is my favorite plugin right so now i created a fx channel let's say um okay i'm gonna rename them let's say slap 
back delay okay and if you want you can go and cut the low cut the high however you want to process them you can add compressor or even another reverb just below this just to get more ambience you can do whatever you want right once you've done that what you can do you can go here and click on this button here go to save track preset now you can name them so delay slap back ambient for example okay and hit ok now when you go to the user preset track preset go to audio and now you're gonna have this delay slap back ambient right so cool just drag it drop it and now you have another effects added okay make sure to set this up Okay, the next one is also user preset, but I'm going to talk about the FX chain preset. This is useful when I have my favorite plugin chain that I use all the time. Okay, I'm going to go to insert right now. You see this uh, drum track, it has a replica in it. But what ha see what happens when I add this reverb pro plugin chain. It, it replaced the previous plugin with my favorite plugin and with the settings that I always use. Okay, this is what I always use for Reverb Pro and Reverb Pro. There's another one for Eater that I use, a different plugin, right? And it is quick and fast, and I can bring them whenever I want, real quick. So make sure to save your effects chain. Okay, let's move on. Okay, the last one I have for today is the MIDI mapping. Okay, this is my MIDI remote. Okay, I'm not going to talk about how to set this up. There's a lot of you out there that explains that. So today what I'm going to show you guys is how I've set this up, okay? So I'm going to press a button on my APC and watch what happens. Okay, now I have a different sets of key shortcut, but I haven't fully configured this yet. So I'm going to press this again. It's going to go back to the main page. So what I've done is go to Mapping Assistant. Here you can see Mapping Page Action. Okay, I have Activate Composing activate cubase plugins and so on okay this is what i used to have so for composing i have my own sets of shortcut keys and for mixing i have my own sets of shortcut keys and a mapping i have three page one is default cubase plugins and composing so if i go to cubase plugins now now it changed to activate default so from cubase plugins sets of shortcut keys now i can go to activate default and from the default I don't have that option because I have two other page that I can set as the shortcut key right so now when I press my shortcut key here and now it goes to the composing and now it goes back to the default so that's it for today guys that's all I'd like to share with you guys today so make sure to set this up after you have installed Cubase it's gonna definitely help you with your workflow and get things done faster and will not mess up with your creatives. So if you guys find this video helpful, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notification, smash the like button and share this video to all Cubase producers and users. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.